I'm here with Ian Jeffrey, CEO of Breathe Life. Ian, so great to meet you virtually. Um, excited to know more about Breathe Life. Excited to learn more about you. So why don't we just jump into tell us a little bit about your background and of course, why did you start Breathe Life? Uh, you know, I, I mentioned jokingly before we joined, a lot of carriers are leaning out. Breathe Life is leaning in. I can't wait to hear more about it. So you want to just uh, tackle the first one about yourself and then jump into why did you start Breathe Life? Absolutely, Dan. Thank you so much, first of all, for, uh, for having me today. I'm really excited to, uh, to be on the show with you. Uh, so by way of background, um, I have been an entrepreneur my, my entire life. Um, I started my first business when I was 12, cutting, cutting grass and uh, raking leaves and painting houses and stuff like that. And as you can see by the toys in the background, um, I have a few, uh, two children. I have two boys as well. And my, my oldest is 12. So I'm trying to get him to, to so start working So you're future grass well. cutters is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and my father was actually a senior executive at one of the large carriers here in, in Canada. And uh, he always told me, you know, don't ever start a business. It's, it's way too much work. Uh, I did not follow that advice. <laughs> I have always started my own businesses, and I did. Um, I did my first venture in tech back in 2006. I left Montreal, uh, which is home still today, but I left Montreal and I moved to Silicon Valley. And uh, I was in the heart of it all and, and started building businesses around technology. Um, and one of the things with technology is that you can build uh, new technology just because you can, right? Just because it's it's innovation. And one of the things that uh, for me was really important with this, with this current business is I wanted to build a business with purpose. Um, I didn't want to build a business just, just because I could. I wanted to build something that would have an impact. Uh, and I started doing a lot of homework as to, you know, what would be my next venture? Wh where do I want to work? And I found this opportunity in the life space, which I thought was really, really uh, potential for, for real, real impact. And when you look at this industry that hasn't changed all that much in a very long time, um, I felt like here I could, I could really bring some good to the world. And ultimately, you know, I want my kids to say one day, you know, my father did that. And the thing that, uh, that, is, that is really of great impact here is that, you know, yes, we're building software, right? But the software that we're, that we're building is being used by carriers and, and agents you know, around North America to sell the life insurance product, which, which we know obviously is fundamental and really, really uh, has a real impact on, on people's lives, right? When we have that, that protection for our loved ones in place, that brings tremendous impact. And I, I tell the story all the time, as I was thinking about this, this venture and what I wanted to do, uh, the first person I spoke to was a, a good friend of mine that we had worked together in, in the previous world, role. And uh, I told him what I was thinking about doing this, and he jumped in like immediately. He was like, I got to do this with you. And I was like, what all these, what's this excitement about, right? It's like, I'm talking about the insurance world. People don't usually get very excited about insurance, <laughs> right? And he told me the story that uh, when he was nine years old, uh, he lost his father to cancer. Um, but, his, but his father was an entrepreneur and had great life insurance. And so, you know, although it was a very sad moment for him, you know, he was proof of that impact that I was trying to bring, which was, you know, his mother never went to work. She never worked ever. Uh, he went to private school. So did his brother. They went to university. Like the, the protection that his father had put in place actually served the purpose of protecting his family. And so, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting chills just talking about it again, but that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to help uh, an industry transform. So fundamentally we can have a big impact on everyone, you know, in North America, you know, but, but globally as well. I think there's a massive, massive, massive opportunity to, um, to help uh, drive the, the thing that I think is driving us all, right, is, is to protect more people. Well, it's, it's impact for, for all the right reasons, which is, which is great to learn. Um, I love the angle that it's uh, generational for you with your father's time in the insurance industry. That resonates really well with a lot of brokerage general agencies. Um, a number of them are generational. They're in probably in, in their third, third go around, if you will, started by the grandparents and then the parents and now the children. So that really resonates. But here's something that, that sort of jumped off the page at me. Um, um, I'm a, I'm, I, would, I wouldn't say I'm tech savvy. I'm definitely tech savvy. I'm probably tech dangerous by most uh, definitions. 
so I have an, I have an appreciation for innovation, in this case, insurance innovation. And, and given your background, well, first off, given your family history in the insurance world, you're clearly your passion around insurance, but combining that with your technology background, you know, what, in your opinion, what does the future of, of life insurance distribution look like? Well, thanks. And I should also add, just as a funny story, because I love to tell stories, my, my brother actually sells uh, property and casualty insurance. So like we've, we've been You're through You're an all insurance family. Um, exactly. I mean, exactly. holidays at your house must be interesting. Do you talk about premium, unilateral contract changes? <laughs> exactly. So um, um, to answer your question, what is the future of life insurance distribution look like? Well, um, we started this business, I started iterating on this exactly four years ago. It was October, 2017. And I think that things have changed already significantly. I think that um, back then, especially, a lot of people, um, a lot of brokers and, and, and whatnot were scared of technology. And, and you know, I think that the rise of companies like Lemonade or uh, Ladder Life and, and all these companies that are really trying to disintermediate uh, the human being part of it uh, mm -hmm. was a big driver of, of this fear. Um, what I think is that the human component, especially in life, right, is so important, right, um, that the human component isn't, isn't going to go anywhere, right? But I think that technology will, will enhance that experience and help the humans who are, who are selling these products and making sure that people are protected will play a much larger role. And I think in the early days, there was this fear of, you know, completely disintermediating the, the, the human component. I don't think that's the right path. I think our job as software developers and vendors to this industry is to provide the tools, the modern tools, to enable a, a better selling experience, a better purchasing experience, because we all know that buying life insurance is extremely difficult. Selling it is extremely difficult, but we can use technology to help everyone in this mix uh, get a much better experience. I mean, we're buying everything online, right? We're buying everything through technology. You can buy a car, you can buy a house, yet it's still very difficult to buy life insurance in a digital user, a great user experience. Yeah. And I think that companies like ours, you know, what I call the enablers to the industry are going to transform the way that people uh, sell and, and, and buy life insurance. Whereas there will be companies like um, going straight to consumer and, and that's fine. And I think, you know, there's, you, you saw this week, Ladder Life announced this gigantic uh, raise. Mm -hmm. I, that's fine. I think there's room for both. But what I'm more interested in is helping the industry transform, helping the industry have uh, this great user experience. Because at the end of the day, if we provide a better experience to the ecosystem, we are all collectively uh, driving a much better experience, and we will be able to, um, to get more people protected. Well, I, I love what you're saying there because it's, I mean, you, with some of the other groups that you mentioned, I mean, clearly there's a lot of, um, a lot of buying leads, right? And, and, and what they do with them and, and the cost uh, it actually is to them over the span of a, of, of a policy. But, you know, what you're coming up with, you know, you're mentioning the words ecosystem. I mean, that, that screams to me, there's, there's uh, the, the terminology of hybrid. So, call it hybrid distribution. Um, you know, when I, when I come back with you with that kind of, of analysis, how does that land on you? I mean, what are your thoughts on, on hybrid distribution? Because clearly moving forward, um, this has all, always been a relationship business. And, that, and that's what, you know, has been for a lot of the BGAs and, and MGAs out there. It's all about relationships, especially with the independent advisor. But what does a hybrid distribution look like moving forward? Well, I can talk about, you know, what I think is hybrid today and what I think hybrid will become, right? So today, what Breathe Life is focused on is really delivering a hybrid experience between this self-serve environment and the, the advisor-driven environment, right? What we believe is that uh, we can enable this great purchasing experience for the advisor who's working with their clients and building that relationship. But we also feel that some of that process doesn't have to be done the old fashioned way, face to face in a conversation like at the kitchen table, it can be done remotely and it can be sometimes driven by the consumer, sometimes driven by the advisor, and sometimes it's a combination of both. And, and what we believe is that that 
that flow doesn't exist today in a well-oiled machine, right? Like there's a lot of segmentation and, and all these different systems aren't talking to one another. And you'll use one system for one thing and one system for the other thing. And what that creates is like just this disjointed experience. And so what yep. we're trying to focus on in the near future is, is bringing all of that experience into one place that is, that is as I said earlier, sometimes driven by the consumer. So the consumer might start purchasing self-serve, be connected to an advisor based on geography or a relationship or the carrier, whatever, whatever it may be. And the advisor continues the experience and, and completes the sale remotely, or it may be done like started from the advisor and the advisor says, well, you know, what we need to do is work on the needs analysis. So I'm going to send you this email, right? And this email will take you through a self-serve experience where you're going to answer some questions and create that, that needs analysis flow. And but all of this being centralized in one, in one platform. And that's, that's what we're building. That's what we're building today. That's what carers are, are using today. That's what advisors are using today. And the results have been tremendous. Like we measure the uh, satisfaction score of the independent advisors as they're using the platform, we'll ask them to score us. And our scores are through the roof, they're at 94%. And we do the same with consumers and those scores are even better, we're at 98% satisfaction. So that's what we're doing today. What I think in the future is there will be more channels that will come through. And these, these, new, these will be new channels that are you know, sometimes through affiliates or sometimes through other types of, 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 uh, of relationships. And what we wanna do is be the operating system that merges all of that experience together. So it's great for the consumer, it's great for the advisor, it's great for the carrier, it's great for the reinsurer. Everyone who's involved has uh, more sales, a reduced cost, and ultimately fundamentally protecting more people. I love that you keep using the word experience. Um, you know, uh, people probably get tired of me saying that, but right, if you're going to make an investment and the investment is an experience, people will come back for their other needs because of the experience. If it's just a transaction, you, you lose them when the process is done. Um, and, and, you know, that, that's exciting for, for lots of reasons because it's, it's what we know today, right? You know, I, I was you know, fingers crossed that while you were speaking, my doorbell didn't ring from something I ordered on Amazon, you know, the night before. <laughs> but that's, that's how we, that's how we are living today. And, it, you know, it goes into, you know, your thoughts around technology. And, and you know, the last question I, I want to want you to, 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 to tackle would be, you know, technology enabling agency forces. Um, expand on that a little bit, because, you know, there's, there's so much tied into like, legacy software and the way we've done things and not really truly leveraging technology moving forward. Um, and there's a fear. So how, how does it enable that, that agency force? Hey, it's funny you talked about the doorbell ringing because I don't know if you guys saw, but someone came down the stairs as we were talking. I was like, don't come now, this is that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how can technology enable uh, agency force? Well, I, I think there are, I think the natural instinct at first is, is to be scared because you know, everyone is scared of, of the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, and I think going back to my previous point is that because of the big technologies that have come out recently were enabling this D2C, it's normal, right, to, to be scared of this. But the reality is technology is actually usually a great thing, right? And usually um, it helps do the things that you're doing more efficiently. And that's, that's what we are trying to, to accomplish here. Specifically for us, like right now, we're still in that, that first phase of our journey. So we are, are really focused on being able to enable as many insurance products as possible on our shelf. And as we do this, we start talking more and more to, um, to agencies and IMOs and BJs, et cetera. But right now, it's still the early days of this because it's so disjointed. And as you said, there are so many, so many systems and legacy systems that we still have a lot of work to be done before I think that this really uh, dramatically um, increases uh, the efficiencies of, of, of the forces. So it's, it's going to take time. Um, I think uh, given the type of industry we're in, um, I think that's fine because mm -hmm. it's a slow moving yeah. industry. Um, right. So the truth is like today, I'm not hundred percent sure of the answer to, to your question, but what I do know is that, uh, if you look at some of the technologies that's happened in, in other areas of insurance, like PNC, like I know there's there's huge advancements uh, to come 
And as we focus on getting more products on our, on our platform, we will eventually uh, spend a lot more energy with, with the agency forces than we have historically. Well, it's, it's exciting to hear what you guys are doing. Uh, I want to welcome you into the Nelba world, um, you know, as a, as a new partner of, of, of ours. And, um, you know, it's amazing, right? Metrics for decision-making, who, who, who would think, right? <laughs> it's, exactly, exactly. You know, it's, it's, you know, that feedback from the advisor experience, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys were really, really pleased with a, a 90, 94% uh, approval rating yeah. from the independent advisors engaging with you guys. So that's, that's exciting. And I, I'm, I definitely would like to know more as, as things progress, but uh, thank you for joining us today on uh, Nelba Brokerage in Motion. Again, Ian Jeffrey, CEO of Breathe Life. Ian, any, any parting thoughts or will, will we see you soon? Well, I just want to say thank you very much for, uh, for having us. And we really look forward to working more closely with you and, and uh, uh, accomplishing our mission to protect more people around the world. Awesome. Thanks so much.